Our story begins on Star Island in the coastal waterway between Miami and Miami Beach. Over the years, the people who've lived in this part of Miami Beach often have been famous, sometimes have been notorious, always have been wealthy. The Duke of Windsor, the abdicated King Edward VIII, often stayed with friends in this island neighborhood. Gangster Al Capone once had a not-so-small castle over there. But even Al Capone could not have disturbed his neighbors as much as have the current residents of number 43, Star Island. They call themselves the Ethiopian Zion Coptic Church, a religion these white Americans claim has its roots in black Jamaica. Their outraged neighbors and many law enforcement officials call them a fraud. A group of rich dopeheads who have been allowed to laugh at the law and get away with it. That's because the Coptics insist that marijuana, which they call by its Jamaican name, ganja, is their sacrament, as valid and as necessary to them, they say, as wine is to Catholics during communion. These services take place three times a day, but the Coptics appear to partake of their sacrament just about all the time. Their leader here on Star Island is a six foot seven inch former Catholic from Boston named Thomas Riley. He prefers to be known as Brother Love. Well, let's start from the beginning. Page one of the Bible, Genesis book one, verse 29. Behold, I have given you every green herb bearing seed which is upon all the face of all the earth. Now, is there any dispute that marijuana is a green herb bearing seed that grows all over the earth? All right, let's, let's address ourselves to the truth. Here's the basic message you should smoke, Ganja. The basic message is you should stop your sin. When you and I are neighbors, and I have the security that you are a man who keeps the commandments of God, then I know you're not going to rob me, you're not going to murder me, you're not going to covet me. So that's the only security that people can have, is to stop their sinful ways, stop becoming homosexuals when they know what the scripture says about homosexuality, they know what wisdom shows you about destroying your own seed of life. They should stop their abortion, they should stop their birth control, they should stop their oral sex, their hand sex, and any way that they're destroying their own life and their own seed of life. They should stop those things immediately. And they should have known to be smoking ganja from a long time. For how is it that I know to? The Coptic Church bought this house in 1975 for $270,000, paid for in cash. It's a kind of luxury commune with about 40 members, but a commune that adheres to the Bible, Old and New Testament teachings. A kind of combination of Billy Graham fundamentalism and kosher law. Though there is no formal marriage ceremony, the Coptic women must be faithful and subject to their husbands. But the women and even the Coptic children are encouraged to smoke marijuana. The Coptics claim that their mother church is on the Caribbean island of Jamaica. Brother Love and his American brethren first came to Jamaica in the early 70s. They were all graduates of Haight-Ashbury and the campuses of the 60s, a remnant of a lost generation. They came looking for marijuana and they found it and bought it in the slums of Kingston from this Jamaican, Keith Gordon. At the same time, Gordon introduced them to an obscure Christian sect. This was the Ethiopian Zion Coptic Church, which claimed for years that the blacks of Africa were the original Jews of the Bible and that the slaves of the New World were their direct descendants. Marijuana, or ganja, was the holy herb. Ripe for a new spiritual experience, these Americans could have found nothing better than a religion that extolled the poor, the black man, and marijuana all in one tidy package. Coptic Heights lies 30 miles outside Kingston. The Coptic Church owns as far as the eye can see. They have roads. They have trucks. Lots of trucks. They have a dozen corporations trading under different names. To the average Jamaican, these Coptics are efficient, prosperous, and highly suspect. What they're doing is, on an organized basis, exporting marijuana to Miami. Jamaican journalist Don Rich. The group in Miami at Star Island, they 
are the backers. They are the people with the money. They control this thing that they would like to pretend is a church. It is no church. <laughs> that is a factory for the export of ganja. Law enforcement agencies say that with his newfound American friends, Keith Gordon's marijuana business took off like a turpentine cat. From being a small-time pusher, he quickly grew to head an organization that controlled cultivation and large-scale distribution right into the United States. Today, the majority of marijuana grown illegally in fields such as this throughout Jamaica has already been pre-sold to Brother Keith and the Coptics. It's prime marijuana that's much in demand. Colombian marijuana, Mexican marijuana is between 2 and 4 percent THC. Our marijuana is between 4 and 8 percent. So we are genuinely the source, also processed. But Coptic has, I am told, 7,000 acres of farm in Colombia as well. We are now a branch, you see. They claim in, in Florida that we are the source. We are the home of this church. We are simply a branch of a multinational corporation operating on the wrong side of the law. Is this whole church, based so conveniently in Miami and Jamaica, just a cover for large-scale organized crime? Well, no, it's certainly not as simple as that. All the law enforcement agencies who have investigated the Coptics agree. They cannot be faulted on the sincerity of their religious views. Moreover, the Coptics have never, never been linked in any way with the smuggling of hard drugs, cocaine and heroin, that right now is so rampant throughout Florida, nor with other activities associated with so-called mafioso crime, such as prostitution, gambling, and gun running. None of these would be consistent with the Coptics' professed beliefs. Marijuana, and only marijuana, is what the Coptics are about. To them, it is a holy mission. Back in Miami, the Coptics are pursuing that mission with all the zeal of a political candidate running for office. They recently hired a production company to film their every move, and they study their screen performances with great care. They advertise themselves, together with a biblical plug for marijuana, in the Miami telephone book Yellow Pages. And they publish an expensive newspaper, which details with relish their latest costly legal battles. Where does Brother Love say he gets the money to do all this? I want you to consider that you're talking to a spiritual person who has solved the physical problems. And we should be talking about the matters that could uplift everyone who's hearing us right now. Well, where the money for this thing? Do you read in the scripture, money is the, the tool of the devil. The love of money is the root of all evil. We love the blessing. Within blessing, we found a higher way of thinking than dollars and cents. Money is a tool, a worldly tool. How do you feel about the Internal Revenue Service case? I'm just a bunch department. of robbers and thieves and whores. The Internal Revenue Service? Robbers, thieves, and whores. On what evidence? They have no integrity. They have no foundation. Uh, they all have little soft, pink, fleshy little hands. They sit in offices all day long trying to rob the people. Brother loves brotherly love clearly wears a little thin when reminded of the Internal Revenue Service. Recently, estimating the value of automobiles, property, boats, and the amount of marijuana seized so far, the IRS and the U.S. Customs presented the Coptics with a bill for back taxes and penalties totaling $18 million. Privately, law enforcement officers hope that the tax man may succeed where the police have so far failed and bring down the Coptic church. The Coptics have simply refused to pay and to them, it's just one court case among many. Their minds and a great deal of their money are right now tied up in a legal battle of greater significance, which they are determined to win, if necessary, by going all the way to the United States Supreme Court. Not from the time you say legalized, that to me sounds like whiskey. And whiskey is something you can buy from the government, but if you make your own, they'll put you in jail. So that does not apply to marijuana. Marijuana ganja is free. We're not fighting for the freedom or the legalization. We're declaring that it is and always has been free. <laughs> 